In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Hey, welcome home to Cassidy. My name is Stephen Mitchell, and I have the privilege of being the lead pastor here at Cassidy, and it's a great joy to have you with us, to be able to come together and celebrate and worship the God who gives light to the world. Uh, We've been talking about this brand new sermon series, and we're excited to have you join in with us. If you're new here, uh, you picked a great time to join us. We are talking about how God continues to give light, even after Christmas, that Christmas doesn't come to an end on December 24th, but that we can experience the presence of God every single day because of what happened at Christmas, because the light of the world has come into the world, and we can experience that light right here and right now. Uh, If you're new here, a special welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy week uh, to spend time in worship with us. Uh, My hope is that in us, in this group of of folks that you are worshiping online with, that you will come to realize that, hey, we, we realize we're not perfect, but we know the one who is, and that's Jesus Christ, and we want to be more like him, and we want to invite you to come on a journey with us so that together we can be made more like Jesus, so that together we can learn to love like Jesus and we can learn to live like Jesus, loving God and loving our neighbor and and making a difference in this world on behalf of Jesus Christ. Uh, This week we're going to talk about uh, how the light of God eliminates fear, that light eliminates fear. When my daughter was young, uh, and actually, quite frankly, still today, uh, she had an overwhelming fear of the dark. Uh, she was afraid of the dark to the point that uh, it just it was it was painful for her uh, to go outside in the dark. Uh, now she's gotten a little bit better, uh, but she'll be the first to admit that she's not comfortable in the dark, especially by herself. Uh, and and her job when she was a, a little kid was to take the garbage out. She would take the garbage out to the garbage cans, but then once a week, she would have to take the garbage out from the garage to the street. Uh, Now, our neighborhood did not have any street lights, so it was pretty dark outside, and and she would almost always wait until the darkness had settled over the, the neighborhood before she had to be reminded, hey, tomorrow's garbage day. You're going to have to take out the trash. And, and she would start by saying, but dad, it's dark outside and, and try to get me to go with her. And, and, and I found myself on more uh, garbage days than not that I was standing in the driveway uh, right next to the, the thing, you know, maybe walking out with her to the curb. And I was like, this really defeats the purpose. Of, of her doing, uh, doing the, the garbage for her chore. And so I decided in my infinite wisdom as a father, I was going to help her through that. I was going to help her through the darkness by showing her there was nothing to be afraid of. And so we took a, an evening when sun had set and darkness was falling on the neighborhood and we sat down at the end of the driveway. Now it was summer outside and it was warm, so there was really, the, you know, it wasn't cold or rainy or anything. We were just sitting on the end of the driveway and she was visibly concerned and her fear came from the fact that she just couldn't see everything that was in the neighborhood around her, everything that was going on. And she would hear things and hear cars passing and it just made her uncomfortable. She was nervous to the point of, of not being uh, able to, to even relax a little bit. And my hope of helping her through this by demonstrating to her, hey, that I'll, I'll, I'm right here with you. Nothing is going to get you. It's okay that that, that, didn't, that didn't carry through enough for her. She wasn't ever comfortable enough to just go out there and do the garbage. I would have to stand in the garage or she would take the garbage out before it was dark. That got to be kind of a thing in the house. Hey, it's, it's going to be getting dark soon, so you better take the garbage out. Uh, and my, 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 my thought is this. 
we recognize in, in darkness, in physical darkness, we recognize our limitations a whole lot more than we do in the daylight because our perception of control is limited. It shrinks down. We don't see everything that we want to see. We can't understand our surroundings to the level that we normally can, and it can bring fear into our world. This past week, we experienced brokenness uh, in, in our world, in our nation's capital, as people from a mob stormed the Capitol building. And I, I watched with a broken heart and in shock um, as people rushed in, and we know that there has been loss of life and damage and, and all of that that occurred. But my thought is this, when, when we really start to think about the darkness when we think about not just physical darkness, but spiritual darkness as well, one of the things that leads to acts of darkness and acts of brokenness is fear. A mob mentality is not based on, on, a, uh, on holistic motives. A mob mentality is based on fear, that we are afraid that things will change for the, and, and be different, or we're afraid that things won't change. And it's that fear that brings us to our knees. And, and when we're in the middle of some kind of a scenario like that, and, and, and we're letting others dictate who we are and, and what we should do and how we're going to live our lives, rather than turning to the one who has already said, you are mine, I created you, and I want you for life and love, uh, then, then we are going to end up in a broken and dark place. I, I, I believe with all my heart that I don't have any say in telling you who to vote for or what party you should seek after, but I do believe with everything I have that I am here to remind you that we are first and foremost, citizens of heaven. We're, we're not American Christians. Our, our Americanism doesn't taint our Christianity. We're Christians who live in America. Our Christianity should be the overriding thing for everything we do, everything we say, and everything we understand. Because if we start to think that we have uh, this need to go and make, make everything the way that we believe that it should be, that we are the only ones that, that understand this, then, friends, we're on a dark path. Because God uses all of us together to understand His will. The body of Christ isn't just one individual that thinks and leads and does everything, but it's all of us together that move in building the kingdom of God right here and right now. I, I think it's interesting looking at those images and remembering what Jesus said when he was taken in front of Pilate. Pontius Pilate had arrested him. Uh, the Jews had arrested him and brought him before Pontius Pilate so that they could kill him. And Jesus is asked by Pilate if he is a king, and he responds this way. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders, but my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. And yet far too frequently, Christians hold fast to the kingdoms of this world instead of allowing God to truly be our king. And, and, and we try to figure out ways that we can make it better instead of seeking the God that is already working to make it better. We have uh, in, the, in the letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians, he says this, but your citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there. This is, we are not the Savior. Jesus is the Savior. We're, we're awaiting His return. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enabled, enables Him to bring everything under His control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. Friends, Maybe you experienced darkness in this past week 
in a new way. Maybe it was something that was profound and, and heartbreaking or, or heart-wrenching for you. Maybe it's caused you to question your beliefs, your reality. Maybe it's given you a different worldview than you had before. Maybe this whole past year has done that. And, and, and I want to remind us, remind us that, that we are servants of the God who created the heavens and the earth. We are servants of the God who sent Jesus into this world, not to rule over the world, but to serve the world and to bring the world into relationship with the Father. And once we start to realize that, once we can grasp onto that and, and live into that, we can start to understand and truly believe this, that God's light overcomes darkness and fear. We don't need to be afraid of the future. God has already written in stone that he will return and take us to, to the new creation and that we will live with him and he will be our light. There will be no more sun in the sky. Instead, God himself will be our light. God's light overcomes darkness and fear. If we let it, but we have to allow him in and we have to allow him control. We have to allow him to speak life and light into our lives so that we can come alive in that truth and that hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Remember these words. This is what I started the sermon off with. It says this, in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness cannot overcome it. The darkness is held in check by the light. The light of the world has come into the world in Jesus Christ, and he offers his light and life into our lives. And, and my, my under, I, I understand completely. Watching those images uh, this past week, I, I, I was concerned. I was concerned for our nation. I was con as a veteran and an American citizen, uh, I was concerned for our nation. But my ultimate faith and trust isn't in America. My ultimate faith and trust is in Jesus Christ. Friends, Jesus reminds us that, that things aren't going to be easy that things aren't going to be all sweetness and, and joy, but instead that there's going to be some difficulty. Jesus says this in John's gospel, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world, not by bringing the world into perfect alignment with his will and righteousness yet. Jesus has overcome the world by standing up to sin and death and then offering our lives the ability to do the same. Jesus gives us light and life. Jesus returns us to life after we have turned away from his light. And God gives us this hope and this expectation so that we can live in accordance with his will, so that we can love in accordance with his will, so that we can share grace and hope and peace in this world. The psalmists, I, I love the psalms, I really do, because the psalms, the psalms tell stories of anguish and heartbreak and hurt and hope. And, and, and so I turn to the Psalms as Jesus did when he experienced life and difficulty and things like that. And, and, and we have two today that I want to pull from. And it says, Your light, for you light my lamp. The Lord my God illumines my darkness. And in Psalm 27, it says this, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When we turn our lives over to Jesus, when we turn all that we are over to Jesus, 
We are able to embrace the light in a way that we have never been able to do before. Because our trust then is in a future and in a a current hope. That current hope isn't that uh, we have to wait until Jesus comes back for us to experience light and life. Our current hope is that Jesus has made a way for us right here, right now to experience his hope and his life. His salvation is made available to each and every one of us. He offers light and life to us and says, all you have to do is accept it. You don't have to jump through any hoops. You don't have to run through fire. You don't have to transform the world on your own. Instead, you just have to accept what I am offering to you. And that Once we accept that and we truly start to embrace that mindset, we recognize that Jesus truly is the King of kings and truly is the light of the world. And once we realize that, friends, then we can start to trust and rely on the things that he says, that we know that all things are under God's control, that the the chaos and brokenness of this world are being made right through Jesus Christ. And it might not be happening in the timeline that we look for and and, in the timeline that we are hoping for and with as much pomp and circumstance as we would like, but it is still true. Because the God who sent Jesus into the world sends light and life into us and allows us to reconcile, coming into a right relationship and living fully in the purpose and plan for, that God has for each and every one of us here and now. And so my hope in this time is that we will re- realize that God truly is in control. And that we don't have to be afraid or be fearful for what we, what we experience around us. And we will stand up to, to, um, to brokenness in our world and, and, and stand up for our friends and family and brothers and sisters and not allow, not allow evil to overwhelm us because the light of God has come into this place. And we can take heart in that. We will stand up to people who are abusing their family members. We will stand up to people that are hurting other people. We will stand up for Jesus on behalf of those that are weak and marginalized. Not so we can feel righteous about ourselves, but so that we can serve the God who sends us into the world. Because we know that all the good things in this world come from the Father of lights. James tells us this, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. God is not a shifting shadow. He's not uh, being blown one way or the other. God is steadfast in his resolve and in his understanding. His plan was cemented before we were created. And he knew how he was going to bring about reconciliation. And he knows how he is going to bring about the return of Jesus into this world and take us home where there will be no more tears, where there will be no more hurt or brokenness, where there will be no more sickness or illness or death, that there will be life. And that life is the light of mankind. Because the truth is, friends, it is only in the light that we know that there is nothing to fear. It's only when we embrace the light that we can shed that fear. Just like Savannah sitting on the driveway, if the light had been out, if the sun had been up, she would have been able to see all the things around her and know there was nothing to fear. It is only in the light of Jesus Christ that even Our lives, even our being, can be set in peace and in motion for Jesus Christ. It is in His light that we can come alive and that we can serve and we can live alongside in peace and in hope with one another. Friends, my hope is that you will join me in praying for our nation praying for our church and for the unity of the body of Christ in the building of the kingdom of God. That 
in our faithfulness to Jesus Christ, the world will take note that in our love, in our love, that is what sets us apart. And in the grace that we have received from God and the grace that we share with others, that is what catches the attention of those around us. Let us be like Jesus. Let us live like Jesus and let us love like Jesus now and forever. Let's pray. Gracious God, I give you thanks and praise for Jesus Christ. I am, I am heartbroken for the actions and, and, and the visuals that we saw on the news and the, the, the hatred that is being spoken back and forth and the divisiveness that we see in the political arena and the way that we are embracing separation. Father, help us. Come, Lord Jesus, into our lives into our midst so that we can put our faith and trust in you, so that we can lose the fears we have in this world and we can embrace the hope we have in the world to come, so that we can be true followers of the light and we can reflect and share your light with everyone we come in contact with. God, I pray that in this moment you would pour your Holy Spirit out upon us, that as we have gathered here to celebrate and give you thanks, that you would be preparing us, preparing our hearts and our minds to be made more and more like Jesus. That in your great love and grace, we would be overwhelmed by your love and grace so that we can share your love and grace with others. Help us to, to not hold back. Help us to embrace one another in love and in hope and in the peace that surpasses all understanding that comes from the Father of lights. God, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and we ask that it would be done on his behalf. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may it be so. Amen.